Hey, 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 what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Hanging Out with Nolan Hong. And joining me this week on the podcast is an international artiste. Uh, I, I, I say that she's technically not our first international guest because we had John Bryan on and he was technically calling us from Japan. But, you know, he's a, a Hawaii boy, so I, I feel like this guest is our true first international guest because she's born and, and raised in the UK. She's visiting us uh, via satellite all the way from the UK. She's none other than Jenny Leonard. Jenny, welcome to the show. Hello. Lovely to be here. Thanks for having me. See, and now our listeners know for sure that I'm legit have uh, that you are from the UK because your your accent just gives it away right there. I've got this awful English <laughs> accent, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so what part of the UK are, are you from and, and living in? Well, I'm originally from London, um, mm -hmm. but I'm now living in Bristol. So Bristol is just a city um, in the west of England. So, And I recently moved here. I only moved here about a month ago. So it's a bit of a new move for me. I've been in London for about eight years and I grew up there. So, um, so yeah, that's where I'm at at the moment. So uh, I know a lot of people are familiar with London just because it's a big city, big international mm -hmm. city and such. How does Bristol compare to London? Well, it's been a lovely welcome break, actually. There's, oh, yeah? a lovely dock, there's lovely docks to walk around here. And yeah, it's a bit more outdoorsy. And London under the under the times of COVID and stuff just isn't that very, it's not very pleasurable to be there right now. <laughs> so it was a it was a welcome change. I've been there for a while working freelance. And now because everything's online, it would just seem like a good time to move. But I'll never diss London. I like it there. But um, just just good to have a change of scene. Is, is Bristol kind of a smaller town it's a small yeah it's a smaller city um but plenty going on when when everything's not shut of course at the moment everything's closed but um but yeah there's lots going on and i've got lots of friends here so that was kind of the move the, the idea to come here and be in part of a smaller community so that's nice awesome well so jenny and i met through uh alice inoy we did her uh 2021 event and if if any of you got a chance to to watch it uh it was a pretty amazing uh, talk and she helped get us through uh, prepare for 2021 but um, she had met Jenny I don't even know how she found you but uh, <laughs> I'm not sure I think through the powers of Google which yeah. <laughs> I've been working on my side lately my website's getting a lot of hits on Google and I'm getting a lot of uh, international clients so yeah it was just just a random Google search I think and she got in touch via my website and that's how she got me ah uh, you must be doing something right with your Google site or something your website because like yeah <laughs> For us to find you all the way from here. <laughs> I know. Well, it's a WordPress I've had for years and I'm not very techie at all, but it just seems to be working at the moment. So something to do with keywords or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> but so uh, Alice had told me like, hey, I'm I found this scribe. And this is why I always refer. I know your name is Jenny Leonard, but I know you as Jenny the scribe because that's how we refer to you. Um, yes, I should have that on my headstone. Yeah. <laughs> Little parentheses, Jenny the scribe yeah. Leonard. <laughs> but she was like, hey. It makes me sound very old English, doesn't it? Like a, like a little medieval sort of little <laughs> hobbit appearing yeah. from behind. No, not a hobbit. Jenny the scribe, here she is. <laughs> we let you out of your little cage every once in a yeah. while. My little cave yeah. <laughs> uh, just with barely just my quill <laughs> <laughs> call the scribe <laughs> but, i love it <laughs> yeah but um yeah so so allison said like hey i'm gonna have this artist who who does uh live drawings of presentations and talks and whatnot and and i didn't understand it at first but uh because mm -hmm. it sounded so intricate and, and difficult and i couldn't imagine anyone pulling it off but Sure enough, there you were just watching <laughs> and listening to uh, presentations and interviews and you were you would illustrate basically a visual of the whole conversation. I mean, it's a combination of almost like notes and almost like when people watch like court TV and they see like the, <laughs> the person <laughs> drawing what the scene looked like and it's like, oh, I feel sure. like I was there. It's kind of like that. And so, yeah, it's a nice description. I should have you do a voiceover for, <laughs> for me. No, yeah. it's really good. It is a hard one to describe. And actually, I think that's why I just upload a lot of visuals onto Twitter and Facebook and all the social stuff, because it's easier to see. I think once people see a picture of what I do, then they can really get a get a sense of, oh, yeah, I get it. Yeah. But actually, to try and put it into words is is quite difficult. But you've given it a good summary there. I don't think I could have said it much better. But yeah, just just doing kind of visual headlines and making it look interesting, obviously, as a as a summary piece for people to 
to look at after an event or a meeting. Yeah, that's what was so neat about it is because it's just visually stunning and and engaging because oh, you. you know, if someone were to say like and put together like bullet points or a PowerPoint of or, or like a review of like, you know, what sure. the meeting was about, yeah. it'd be yeah. pretty basic and boring but the way you make it look like, like you can feel and sense like the emotions behind it and you add oh, color really and nice. and there's little that's caricatures nice. and stuff and yeah, I, I sure. love the, the the other thing you did that was really awesome is that everything that you wrote as far as words go like you use different you you created different fonts and things so different ideas yeah. and stuff didn't just uh they they actually felt different instead of just the same yeah. old handwriting right Sure. I mean, there's a couple of like kind of metaphor tricks I use within that. So like, I know some popular words that I'll make the, the font of it look like the word itself. So oh. I don't know what you call that, like a visual onomatopoeia almost, where it's like, if the word is say fragile, then I'll make the writing look fragile. If the word is robust, then I'll make the writing look like, you know, robust bricks or if the word is build. I'll put build into brickwork. Yeah. Or, yeah, like um, flexibility, people talk about all the time, and I'll make the word flexibility look like it's flexible and stretching muscles. And, <laughs> or the word stretch, you know, I'll stretch it along the yeah. page. Or, you know, there are all these things that the word itself you can make look like the thing. And then it just makes for a more interesting thing when you're when you're looking at it back. But yeah, developing my own fonts or just really making it up as I go along, to be honest with you, you know. <laughs> That's not, what's um... <laughs> amazing about it. Because I mean you're you're going as it as the talk is happening. So it's not like you have time to just sit back and ponder and think, because mm, then it's they're moving on to no. the next thing, right? <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm keeping a very obviously because the the if I'm on a Zoom call, the my webcam is filming my hands and what I'm creating for the meeting, but I'm also subsequently making a, a really messy notepad of notes as well with, <laughs> with things I hear as I go along with just my really messy writing to be like, Oh, that was a good one. I'll, I'll pull on that for later. So oh. it's, it's yeah, 90% listening and 10% and drawing and, and practice, of course, practice, yeah. practice, practice, like any craft you got, you got to do it a lot before you get good at it, I guess. So, before, so yeah. since you said it's 90% listening before you got mm. into doing this type of art, um, would you have considered oh, yourself? <laughs> I was going to say, really? <laughs> oh no, I like the sound of my own voice too much. Don't I? <laughs> um, no, I think I've learned to, to listen out for things. You know, I like to listen out for the visuals because we're talking metaphors all the mm. time. You know, we, we really do. When we, even in the most corporate driest of meetings about finance, you know, someone will talk in a really visual metaphor. Yeah. Um, I don't know, like a popular one for like corporate meetings, is, you know, so, talking about something like, oh, you know, we want to see the light at the end of the tunnel and it's like well, that that's yeah. just a visual you're using there it's nothing to do with the actual workplace what that looks like but it describes to everyone what you want to see so you know then i can create a little tunnel with a train track going into <laughs> it or something like that visual but um yeah i think yeah it's been a it's been a real learning curve especially this year i've been i've been to more meetings in the last year than i have done since you know my career in, in being a freelancer so because of covid really it's just I've, i'm being allowed to peek into all these meeting rooms over zoom across the world and, and meet lots of people and that's been you know that's been a real gift actually which i'm i'm so fortunate for yeah i can imagine and uh i i would think that um the different types of business meetings that you are uh, i guess witness to <laughs> It must be yeah, just exactly. all across the, the board, right? Like not just yeah, only it's... this type of business, right? No, absolutely. I mean, Alice's one was so different for me because it was an astrology event, you know, lots of um, predictions and obviously she had lots of different guests. So that was really cool for me as well. But often I'm doing everything from like, let me try and think of some examples. I'm working with like universities. So, so highlighting their like introductory modules of various courses because none of our students are back at the moment. Um, I work with councils and community groups, roundtables, you know, oil companies that want to change and reinvent their whole company now and have net zero emissions to like one one thing I did with the NHS about the hazards of blood transfusion. Oh so it's quite gosh. the net of, yeah. <laughs> you know, not, quite the net of different things I've been learning about. But um, but it's an interesting little you get to be a fly on the wall in all these um, with all these professionals, you know, just yeah. today, actually, before I before I got on the call to you, I've been doing some work with WWF and they're, they've got all their Arctic experts talking about the ice caps, like really heavy stuff that we should be concentrating on climate change and stuff and talking to the, you know, the top world experts. And then I just get to be like Jenny Leonard in the background <laughs> with a pen 
And I'm going to draw this iceberg, a polar bear now. I hope that's all right. <laughs> that must <laughs> so, be really um, fun, though, to draw those kind of animals, right? Well, those are, yeah, I mean, those are nice visuals. Pretty, pretty <laughs> yeah. tricky subject matter to not leave and feel like the world is ending. Oh, no. <laughs> but, um, but, but, yeah, you know, they make for nice visuals, I guess. That's the silver lining. <laughs> well, you know, so the, the, the artwork that you did for Alice's event, like, um, mm. it seemed very light and, and, and happy mm. and, I don't want to say it's like um, a comic style, but like it's uh, or cartoon style. But when it comes to these kind of um, meetings that you are uh, scribing for, when it's really serious and dark and mm, gloomy mm. and stuff, like sure. do you do you tend to still draw in that way of like I gotta yeah. it, it was dark and gloomy. Let's <laughs> let's put some awful yeah. looks and stuff, yeah. right? Yeah, that's a really good question. I mean, you know, nine times out of ten, if you hire a visual scribe or you hire someone to sketch for your event, you kind of want to pull the positives out of your meetings, right. even if it is a, a, you know, something really dire or like, you know, a systems change or companies, you know, handing over or something. You, you, you tend to want people attending to, to leave with some sort of positive <laughs> metaphor. So, so yeah, I do, I do try and keep my work quite positive. But, you know, there are things I've done quite a few on climate action in the last sort of six months. And there are definitely some some takeaways that are more serious. But I think, you know, that's the power of doing visuals and, and bringing them to life is that actually maybe people take note a bit more and and visuals are so easy to share around mm, the internet and, right you know, you've got jpeg and, and they go far they go much further as you rightly say than you know a minute's word document or a powerpoint presentation they seem to be much more shareable which mm -hmm. i think is interesting you know when i was a kid i always wanted to get my artwork out there and now my artwork seems to be getting itself out there yeah before i have any control over it all i've got to do is give it to the client and then they tend to do the rest or I'll share it once and then it gets reshared. So that, that in itself is, is quite magic really for an artist to be able to, to do that now. So, yeah. And it's, and it seems like it's a pretty good gig for you in the sense that however long the, the meeting is, it's, that's pretty much how much time you have, right? So it's not like you have <laughs> yeah. to spend days and weeks, you know, exactly. doing this artwork, it's fast right? Paced. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's energetic and fast paced. And I do like that. I mean, I, I've started to, I do sort of an hour minimum now because I like to be a bit more engrossed. I think half an hour, you'd get a drawing, but you wouldn't get a very high quality one or you'd maybe get a bit of a quicker sketch. So I tend to say to people that, you know, meetings of an hour or more, but, um, but yeah, I've done lots of different stuff over the past year. So always up for a challenge and what people pitch to me is always interesting. So yeah, I always want to work with a client really and, and keep them happy. Do you think because you're getting to um, be, you know, a witness to all of these, you know, high level business meetings and stuff that it you, you're learning things that maybe you can apply to your business or, or <laughs> even to your life and stuff? Like, have you been seeing like, hey, this is really a, an awesome like this. I'm learning more from this than I would have at, at a university or any kind of schooling. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there are things like I think the most thing I learned is like what is a good presenter and what can be a really dry presenter, you know, like right. some people who are facilitating meetings sometimes that they just ha simply haven't picked the right person to mm. facilitate or to MC it, which is a shame because then the, the meeting tends to fall a bit flat. So I think I've learned a bit about like, oh, that, that person's really good at presenting or, or pulling the question back to the original thing and not letting people, you know, waffle on too much. I mean, the, the main, actually, I, I like, the main thing I have learned is we've all got the same problems. You huh. know, no matter where you go, no matter what um, industry you're in, if it's, if it's a company, if it's a, you know, a corporate, a charity, a council, a school, we're all having these same problems and there are no new solutions. There are only the same ones, <laughs> you know, so, so the, the, the mission statements of lots and lots of companies always have these key words like collaboration, you know, connectivity, <laughs> yeah. creativity, resilience, you know, we've got to act amongst the new normal. We've got to think outside the box. You know, we want to adapt. We want to broaden our networks and all of these things. And we want to be sustainable whilst doing it. Um, and we want to digitalize. That's the new thing as well. And all of these things, you know, that's the same or the across the world all yeah. companies want that and um and and so i guess and the same problems are you know around teamwork and communication mainly so i think it's just we, we're working in across large numbers of people now all across the world lots of companies working all across online and so of course all the problems are the same so um yeah i guess yeah, I think the main learning for me is that I don't want to grow too big as a company. I like being a one man band. Yeah. <laughs> I like doing my own thing. I don't need to have staff working for me. I'm quite happy to be on my own. I don't want to manage other people. That sounds a nightmare. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, just, just stay small and, and stay true, I suppose. 
to that point, I mean, you've been witness to to many of these meetings. Have you ever come across a meeting where it, it, it got really uncomfortable where you're like, should I be here? <laughs> this is getting pretty uh, intense. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I have actually. Yeah, quite a few. Oh, I mean, wow. Lots of different, lots of different Zoom things that go wrong because I'm always at the first point of call for, you know, I'm normally in the meeting 20 minutes early, half an hour early to all the background checks and, and things can be a bit um, tense in that moment where you've got a big company who are just putting on a, you know, a big event for some, some of these Zoom calls I've been on are like, you know, 800, 1,000 people. Oh my gosh. And it's, it's stressful, you know, if things, if, if the tech glitches out or if someone, you know, God forbid, forgets they're on mute, which we do all the time it's always like Wayne you're on mute <laughs> you're on mute Wayne and then Wayne comes in sorry I was on mute like, yeah yeah we know <laughs> you know it's just like that that has just been batted around so many times hasn't it so um so yeah the same sorts of problems and definitely some tricky moments or mainly just when a question is thrown out to the audience and I love it you know you throw a question out you're right who would like to feed back and then no one does yeah I don't think <laughs> I've know, ever the, been a part of one where oh, somebody goes yes I'd like to say something <laughs> it's just awful and um yeah so so that the, the uncomfortable pauses but then i think that's just what life is online at the moment isn't it you know you you couldn't do that in a real team meeting if you're in a room with 20 of your colleagues probably you couldn't all sit silent for longer than you know a 10 seconds but somehow in these zoom yeah. meetings that that time just seems to really lengthen it's like, yeah. the last thing. <laughs> like well, i'm not speaking no i'm i'm, I'm just listening yeah. <laughs> so, um, so yeah definitely some uncomfortable some yeah. uncomfortable parts and uh, I, I have to assume that too, since it's, you have a lot of international clients, do you ever run into the problem where the accent is is too hard to understand, and you're like, I don't know what they're saying. What do I draw here? That's a good question. I don't think so. I think sometimes I can misinterpret and mishear, and I'm a terrible speller, which doesn't always work well for me when I'm scribing. Oh no. Of- uh, words and notes so I can spell things wrong and then someone will will drop a note into chat you know I, I still haven't learned how to spell the word choice I oh. always get the o and the i muddled up like I always do that I always get it wrong um so then someone will drop a little note to me in the chat and be like Jen you've spelt this wrong or that's not what we said but you know nothing nothing that I can't fix yeah no one does a photoshop afterwards and um and yeah and I don't take myself too seriously like, I don't mind if someone says hey you made a mistake or you you misheard then that I'm quite happy to rectify that it's no biggie yeah, you seem like a really fun, easygoing personality. Well, <laughs> so I wouldn't imagine you being like, this is what it is. Take it or leave it. You know? yeah, I'm sorry about that. I've yeah. just drawn that. Yeah. Yeah. My artistic integrity, yeah. I'm afraid. No, you're having it as is. <laughs> now, I know this is, is, is kind of like a newer um, you know, product that you've uh, endeavored on, but mm. in, in, in school, were you the type that used to like whenever the lectures were going on that you'd constantly be doodling and stuff? Like, is this kind of similar to that or? Yeah, I was always drawing actually at school. I mean, from even from when I was real little kid, I always wanted to be an artist. I just never really knew what shape that would take. And no one ever really tells you well, if you're an artist, you just get this sort of image in your mind that maybe you'll be a painter and you'll sell paintings Mm -hmm. and that is the only real thing especially when you're at primary school you you think oh yeah well that that's how it works then I'll I'll sell my work in a gallery and the reality is you know it's not that it's the it's a hustle it's a total hustle of trying everything like probably a bit similar to yourself Nolan I see on your website you know you do a lot of different things yeah you can't just narrow to one thing if you want to be in a creative industry you know my advice to lots of people is like try everything Mm -hmm. you know say yes to everything and from whatever job some jobs you'll mess up and some jobs will be absolutely brilliant and from and you'll learn on along the way you know you learn from your mistakes and every job i get i try and turn it into you know three more jobs or make make three more contacts from one job and even this is just a this is like a happy little thing that's come out of doing a job with alice like, yeah. i've never been on a podcast before this is my first podcast oh really so, 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 yeah yeah it is, oh, yeah. Yay. We're to <laughs> yay. <laughs> yeah i'm thrilled so um so yeah all these things you know these opportunities just come out of meeting people and, and hopefully being nice and approachable and then you never know what's going to happen. I've steered off the, the original question here. You asked me about school and if I was a dude like, yes, I've always drawn and I've always loved to draw. And I, I guess I, I was never, you know, top of my maths class or anything, but but I love to, to create and build stuff and make things. So, yeah. Well, one thing you should know is um, do not be apologetic for jumping off of the original question because okay. that is like, <laughs> that is where the most golden conversations come from is when we veer off of the original yeah, question maybe. yeah i've got a habit of that rattling off in a different direction <laughs> definitely <laughs> so you're talking about how you you grew up want knowing that you wanted to be an artist mm. in in 
uh, America, especially within like Asian households, like mm-hmm. um, whenever children, uh, well, I, I'm I'm summarizing or generalizing, but I think a lot of people agree with me when whenever the idea of um, pursuing art or a creative um, um, profession comes up, mm-hmm. a lot of children are discouraged or or it's viewed as something like, oh, that's that's more of a hobby, not a not a. Uh, a lifestyle and stuff was it was that kind of is that how it is in the uk as well or is it more accepted in the uk as like yeah that's a wonderful profession to pursue i i don't know it's probably a bit of a mix to be honest i mean i'm so fortunate i've had such a supportive family and they've Mm. just encouraged me to 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 follow what i'm good at and you know and do and i remember dad saying to me when i was little well you might not make much money as an artist but you know if you enjoy it then you can give it a go kind of thing but I think for, for definitely for kids now in high school, you know, there's a lot of pressure on kids to, to get great science and maths and English grades, you know, all the, the core core subjects. And there isn't so much, you know, light shone on music and drama and, and art. And it's, it's, it's even harder now with things being online and stuff. So, um, but I mean, fortunately, yeah, like I say, I had encouragement of family, but I think, you know, I do go into a lot of schools now or or doing a lot of Zoom workshops with schools, just encouraging kids to like, look, the most important thing is that you play. It doesn't Mm. matter if you don't know quite how that creative thing. And also to remember that we're all creative. You know, I think it's stifled a bit at school, but actually everyone is creative. And some some of us say in my workshops and people say, oh, I'm not creative. I'm always like, well, have you ever made a sandwich without a recipe? And like, well, there you go. You're creative. (laughs) You made something. Like, you know, you don't have to be, you don't have to draw to be creative. Maybe drawing is not your thing. You don't have to, it doesn't have to take one particular avenue. But um, but I think it, it comes from like serious play, you know, setting mm-hmm. people tasks and saying, here are your boundaries. Right? This is what you've got to come up with today and, and, and making it as creative as possible, you know, and, and out of that, hopefully something really rich and juicy comes. Yeah. How, so what was it about art that you gravitated towards? So at such a young age that you knew that this is what you wanted to do, because mm. so many kids like we, mm. we change everything we want to do, you know, like I want to mm. be a space spaceship yeah you know pilot sure. and i want to be a dolphin <laughs> well i think if you're calling it a spaceship pilot you probably yeah. aren't best suited for it yeah though. it's called national you yeah, know yeah, you gotta, yeah, yeah, you gotta know the title of them <laughs> i'd like to be a spaceship pilot your parents are like well maybe <laughs> maybe that's not the right career for you yeah <laughs> Um, no, I think um, I'd always like to build stuff. I was big into Lego when I was a kid and also like, you know, making stuff out of cardboard boxes. There's always like been stories in my family that like, you know, we'd buy you something for Christmas and you'd take out the toy and then just sit in the cardboard box <laughs> for the day and make that into like a rocket ship or something. But um, but yeah, I always like to make things from cardboard, build things and just draw all the time, drawing, reading comic books and drawing the, the characters from comic books, copying. I'm a big believer in copying for kids. You know, that's mm. how you learn to, to build your you know your drawing skills copy from good artists that you like there's nothing wrong with that yeah. um and yeah i just always really gravitated towards making marks really and just doing it in lots of different ways and i'm just really fortunate now that um, i've made a bit of a career out of it but lord knows how <laughs> <laughs> how long just, have you just been as, well I, I suppose since i was young at the time of my age i always uh, since i was like 16 i've been selling paintings at local shops and oh, galleries wow. and then i went off traveling for a little while so so yeah 20 years that was 20 years ago and um but i've had jobs in between you know and there's no shame in that and i, I think that's what i definitely tell a lot of people as well trying to get into creative industries is that like it's not going to come straight away you know you might not get this golden ticket you just got yeah. to, like, always have it in the background and always have it as your back hustle you know always try to try to do it around it and i've had i've, I've worked full-time as well and done my art stuff on the weekends and the evenings and then fortunately i was i went part-time in a, in a good job that i had and and then gradually sort of phased into into freelance um which is which was a really great way to do it to have a security of you know a bit of money coming in but also a bit of time to play around with with gathering new clients and stuff but um but yeah always had it in the background and always done like murals when i've been traveling and I used to do like murals at hostels and stuff in in return for you know free accommodations. There's a few oh, there's wow. a few hostels out there with uh, with some Jenny, early Jenny Leonard artworks <laughs> in there in New Zealand and uh, yeah. <laughs> that is so cool. I mean, that's kind of the way you know life was like before. Like people would trade goods oh, for services and I stuff, know. right? I know. Wow, I love so, that. I'm actually yeah. So you went no, traveling around the world. Uh, 
Was it just well, to I experience? Just, um, yeah, just like a bit of backpacking, really, when I was 18. Like, um, I just did all the really easy countries that you can get work visas for and that spoke English. So I went to Canada for a year originally um, and did a ski season there and then come back home, saved up a bit of money, went back out to Australia for a year, come home, saved a bit of money, went back out to New Zealand for a year. And then by the time I've done all that, I was mid twenties. Like, I still want to be an artist, but I've got no qualifications. So um, maybe I should go to university now that I'm totally skint and I've got no money. So <laughs> I went, went to art school and then come out closer to thirty, and then was like, oh, it's still really hard to get into creative industry. Maybe I'll just go back to to getting a getting a job. So I, I worked for a youth charity because I've always done youth work and workshops and work with young people and stuff. So. Um, so yeah, that's what I ended up doing in, in the in between times and all of that stuff. So, but it's been it's been really exciting. So can't complain. So when when you do your murals and such, I mean, is there is there usually a, a type or style um, that you do or that you like to do? Um, yeah, so it's it's sort of gravitated a bit similar to the live art stuff that I do now. So mm. lots of kind of bubble writing and and ideas and visuals that people can can bring in but mainly I'm working with commissions so I, I worked at, for commercial stuff so I, I really love a project I mean lots of artists love to do their own stuff and put, put their own spin on it and if they were given a blank wall and just a load of paints they could they could do it but I quite like it if a client comes and says hey we want a jungle theme on this mural mm. or we want a, a space scene on, on I've just done a, a bunch of libraries last year actually in London um, I did seven seven big children's libraries all across the, the south borough of London and that wow. had a theme for each library and I didn't necessarily have to design each one they trusted me a lot with it but they at least gave me a theme for each library and I love that you know because then I can work within those boundaries and I think sometimes you need that if we, you know with the with the best one in the world sometimes if you're given everything like here create anything on this blank canvas it can be really difficult to, right to come up with well then what what shall i do there's, <laughs> there's so much out there so um so yeah so I, I work to commercial briefs and you know a client has a main idea and then i can come up with some sketches and some ideas of what i can put on and then and then hopefully bring that bring that to life really and then i'm a, you know it it's pleasing it has a, it's art for a purpose it it has you know a reason and, and and they've got input as well into it and i think that's important that's got to be the the craziest thing to experience to see your artwork on the side like of a giant wall or a building like i mean that's so much different than <laughs> on a piece of paper in front of you right like yeah, where people definitely. walking by from near and far can can see it yeah definitely yeah i think i was just like got into murals quite young actually and just was like i suppose with anything it's like you've got to be brave haven't you with it and and give it a go but i'm, I'm lucky because my mum's got the gift of the gab she's a hairdresser and oh. she was going around and she uh, the first mural i done was at one of her clients houses because she goes around to people's houses and cuts hair yeah and i was only about 16 at the time and this this lady had a wall and said oh she just had a baby and said oh we'd like to have a dolphin painted on this wall my mum was just like my daughter will do that for you <laughs> yeah I'll go and get and I was like mum I've never painted a massive like wall before yeah. in someone's house no no you can do it you'll and you'll get 20 quid for it so um so I went around like 16 I dread to think what that dolphin looked like now because it was before the age of even you know phones to look at reference pictures that dolphin's probably completely <laughs> out of proportion looks nothing like a dolphin <laughs> but um but I did it and I got my 20 pound and then I thought oh yeah I not quite liked that and maybe I could do some more <laughs> So did you just kind of guess as you went along with that dolphin? Or yeah, I think you had no roughly training, right? like guess. No, no, no wow. training and no framing and just thought, yeah, I could splodge a bit of paint on there. And I mean, it didn't look awful, but um, I probably could do a lot, lot better now. Um, and we should then, go you know, find that lady and, oh, and have you do, redo it. <laughs> I, would hope, I would hope that they painted over it within about six months. Um, yeah. I hope that that's long gone now. I don't want my name to it. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, from there, lots of other like kids' bedrooms. Actually, I did quite a lot of kids' bedrooms and fairy tales. At one point, I did a lot of, you know, dragons and witches and fairies and like, uh, you know, um, yeah, fairy tale kind of scenes on, on kids' bedroom walls. And then then when things come out, you know, different phases that are popular and then everyone at one point wanted Sonic the Hedgehog and then someone wanted Mario, you know, like all of that kind of stuff. So so I've definitely been through different phases with kids' bedrooms. Man, <laughs> I wish you were here because I would want you to do it for my bedroom. Well, one day, <laughs> one day, Nolan, maybe I'll be coming out to Hawaii. That's my aim after this. Oh, man. <laughs> when we'll, all this crazy we'll, is over. <laughs> we'll, we'll trade you a room to stay okay, <laughs> just like the old hostel yeah. days. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. Yeah, I'm in. Come awesome. In. <laughs>
<laughs> Did, so when when you said that like usually the way you do it is you sketch it out first and then you mm -hmm. show the client and then you put it on the wall how how i guess accurate is the sketch to what goes on the wall like do, does the client always feel like yeah i know exactly how it's going to look or is there elements of what oh, it's going to look a little different <laughs> yeah i mean there's always i do always tell them you know there's a bit of wiggle room and from the design the bureau will look better because i think mm. you know you, there's only so much you can fit on a little page and then when you scale it up to a big wall there's always more detail you can put in or you can get the coloring better and you know do little tricks with shading with the paint and stuff so so generally I, i'm pretty confident in telling my clients that look this is just a rough sketch in terms of layout so mm. we can get a sense of what goes where but it's in terms of detail you know it will be much much different but i try to keep true to you know an original so they're not totally shocked when they come back and i've gone you know it's like i say with practice of, of scaling things up so i can now look at a tiny little picture on my phone and scale it up six feet and not have to rub wow. out too much anymore you know not have to erase any, too much anymore because practice you know i used to be it would take me a whole day just to get a pencil outline on a wall and mock something up you know just to get it accurate and yeah. get everything in proportion and now i can confidently probably do it in half an hour wow. which is so nice you know but it's just a, a practice thing and, yeah. and and then you're not really thinking about doing it and you're not worried too much where the marks are going because you know roughly the angles and, and so you become a bit more spatially aware i suppose the more you the more you do it the more you scale up are you the type of uh, of artist that can feel comfortable with it being done or are you the type that you know no long no matter how long you've been doing this every time you can finish the the project and be like oh i, I wish i could have done that or like you always are critiquing yourself and trying to change something uh, that's a good that's a good question um i'm definitely a perfectionist mm. so if i have an idea like at the last minute on the final hour like oh it would look better if i just did this then i'll spend another two hours doing that because once the thoughts come into my mind I'm, it's very hard to let it go uh, you know once you think oh i'm gonna do that and that will be a lot better yeah um or sometimes you know sometimes you make mistakes but the beauty of it is you know like with all these things any any artwork you can make mistakes it doesn't matter you can you can whitewash over it you can paint white you, you know on paper if your drawing goes wrong you can you can do another one you can you can correct it so um i think it's much more you know when you're when you're practicing getting into art and stuff it's much more about taking risks and doing stuff that's a bit different and trying to you know hone your craft than it is to get it absolutely perfect you know better to make a few mistakes and and learn a bit by it than than try and get you know i hate these drawings or what you know when you make when you're little and you're just constantly rubbing out that line you know yeah. everyone does a drawing they're like i'm gonna draw this bird or whatever and you you're drawing, oh the beak's gone wrong you rub it out right. oh it still looks rubbish and before you know it you've kind of torn into the paper you've got a hole in the paper and you're like this is terrible now just just get a sharpie and do it really quick you know yeah. Yeah? really commit to the drawing and do 20 birds and one of them will look good you know, but don't labor don't labor too much over that line because i think that's when it, it just becomes like then it's just a pest yeah you know? and then you, you never get over it but Th um but that's yeah. why that's what would be a problem for me is because i get so lost in the small detail yeah and i can't move yeah. on and 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 i'm also yeah. very terrible at anything so it's <laughs> I'm like sure you're not you're in a creative industry as well i'm sure you're not terrible <laughs> <laughs> well yeah even like well so for to that to that point like when i'm editing the sound you know uh -huh. I, i'll spend such a long time on on a, a little you know tweak to the sound yeah. and then if i if i someone were to say will anyone notice that i'll go oh yeah you're right i i really didn't need to spend <laughs> all this time on there no one's gonna even notice it yeah so yeah. yeah but it's that thing it's that thing that actually is quite important it's important to you right like mm -hmm. you want it to be as good as it can be it's like you know when you're at disneyland or one of these theme parks and you're in the queue like you're lining up for a ride and there's all these little additional things that you can look at like i can remember being in disneyland with my folks and you're, you're queuing up for parts of the caribbean but there are all these details the yeah. things that are made for you to look at and we don't really need those things like you're, you're standing around you know you've got everything at your you know it's just visual assault mm -hmm. but without those things you would notice that they weren't there i think you know it's all these yeah. little details like oh the pirate's treasure chest is open as the kids queuing up and you can explore what's in there or there's you know a big maquette made of this and all of these little things that are just put there for us like, i think it's you know the little details that make something yeah really stand out i always 
always I always try to hide like a little bit of myself within each of my murals. Oh, yeah? So I'll do a little yeah, I'll do like a little self portrait or I'll do like a little secret for some of my friends. Like oh, fine. I put one of my friends yeah, I put one of my friends' dogs in a in a rocket to space <laughs> in the library in South London. And she lives in Canada and then I sent her a picture and I was like, Your dog Arlo's on his way to space in the, in the library in London. <laughs> um but in one of the in one of the treasure chests actually, because I did like an underwater scene at a, at a kids' library, and I put a treasure chest in, and then I had like a locket, and then I did a little self portrait in the locket, and just just oh, things that fine. then I couldn't tell kids, oh, go and find me, I'm in that mural, and you know, a little silhouette of myself and stuff, yeah. and that, that's just for me as a bit of fun as well. <laughs> Do you have a particular thing that you just absolutely love to to draw, like whether it's animals or a sea um, scenes or, or underwater scenes, rather? I what. I really don't. I just love to draw. Mm. Like I love to put lines to things. I don't really have a favorite. I draw different stuff all the time. Um, and, you know, I think if I'm learning something, then it's much more interesting to draw. Like if I'm listening to an interesting meeting or, or learning something at the same time, then that's a real pleasure to be able to kind of translate it at the same time. But I definitely don't have a, a favorite subject matter. Like I went through a phase where I was doing quite a lot of jungle scenes and, mm -hmm. and I paint for um some art trails that are out here like public art sculptures they're called wild in art and they they produce these big kind of fiberglass models that go out on the streets and um and i went for a phase of doing lots of different jungle scenes on them and they're really intricate and people are really like oh cool when you can find all the jungle animals you know hidden in all the leaves and i really enjoy that but mainly i just i really enjoy it when what when after after it's done yeah <laughs> and you know and not, not so much the process all the time when your back's aching and you're just like oh 18 more hours of painting <laughs> but afterwards and you've got little kids going around exploring it and it's just really nice you know it's nice to see your work out being appreciated by people and and i just think well, it should be, shouldn't it? It should be out on the streets. It should be yeah. in murals and on billboards. It, it shouldn't have to be in galleries. You know, not everyone goes to galleries. Not everyone wants to go. So mm -hmm. it should be out there in the public. And I'm big. I'm a big believer in uh, yeah, public art and stuff like that. Yeah, it, it just seems like uh, a little more. It feels more inclusive, and maybe because of that feeling of yeah. being outside. But yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. And feel no like judgment. That. Like you can, mm -hmm. you don't have to like it or like, you, you know, you don't have to get it. There's yeah. nothing to get. There's no conceptual thing. You know, sometimes you, it is intimidating going into these big white hall galleries. Yeah. And like, I'm not sure I'm even going to understand this work <laughs> yeah. and I'm not an artist. So, and I think that's, that's such a shame and that puts people off, you know, it should yeah. be, yeah, definitely. Like, like you rightly said, more inclusive. When you were traveling around the world, were you also looking to find inspiration of other types of art too? Or what were you trying to um, get out of your travels? Um, oh, just adventure really at the mm. time. I was just a bit of a ski bum and I was just young and just wanted to, to be away from home and be on my own little backpacking adventure with really no serious thought about what I'd do afterwards. Wow. <laughs> just with, you know, just with, oh, well, I'll probably go to university one day. Um, and I was, I was lucky, you know, I, I was going into, when I first got to Canada and stuff, I was going into shops and asking if I could, and, you know, hang my work on walls. Like I had a, a few paintings in a, in a snowboarding women's clothing shop. And, you know, I was selling oh. paintings out of, a, out of a clothing shop and only because I went in and asked that if I could hang some paintings up on the wall and you just think, well, probably the things you can get away with if you just ask yeah. and, you know, if you're just nice and you're just like, oh, I've seen you've got a bit of wall space there. I've got these paintings. Would you, would you like to hang them up? And you could take, you know, 20% if you sell them and, you know, just negotiate that. And, and nine times out of 10 people say yes and they wow. want to help. And so, so I had that as a little back burner, like, um, you know, thing b between being working at a hotel and cleaning toilets wasn't so glamorous <laughs> but at least I could make a little bit of cash on the side <laughs> when you were when you're cleaning the hotels did you ever like insert little drawings here and there should have done like should have done yeah, yeah left them under pillows yeah, yeah. or in, in, in the, the mirror no. <laughs> yeah, I didn't actually <laughs> you're mentioning that you you uh grew up really liking comics and stuff what comics mm. did you read so I was a big X Men fan. Yeah, me too. Isn't but yeah, I into <laughs> X Men, into Wolverine, into um, yeah. Oh, I've got a huge collection of X Men comics still up in my parents' loft that they really want me to get rid of and sell. <laughs> but they're just so hard to part with, aren't they? Comics, you yeah. Know, they the special editions with like holograms on the front, and you know they were a lot of money at the time, and they're probably worth a bit more now, but not a load. And not, they're nice to just have really as objects. So, I almost um, think that they're worth less now because I think. Do you reckon? Because <laughs> yeah. I think depressing, isn't it? <laughs> when 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 it was popular, they like just started mass producing them. And yeah, now it's like that's true. everyone yeah. has them. Whereas when, you know, yeah. the early, early days, they were like, well, I don't yeah. know if anyone's going to buy these. So they didn't print as many. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's true. That's true. And a, and a load of different like collectors cards and all the geeky stuff. Like yeah. That. But yeah, X Men was my real thing. And you know, from all the different X Men, you can learn so much about anatomy and and drawing all the different you know types of characters in that. As and they're 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 brilliant comics as well. You know, brilliant storylines and stuff. Yeah, I know X Men had several different um, you know key artists and stuff. Did you have mm, a, a, any mm. particular ones that you enjoyed more? It was Stan Lee, the main the main guy, wasn't he? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think. God, I don't want to get that wrong now. <laughs> well, I I don't, don't ask me for any other artistic references. Or, or be, <laughs> but this facade will break really easily. That I know everything about. <laughs> let's let's jump off of this right now. While yeah, jump off, the, uh, jump off of asking me about fa- other famous artists. Yeah, because yeah, I'm not that well educated. <laughs> well, you knew the difference between a spaceship uh, pilot and an that astronaut, so you're, astronaut. you're still yeah. you're still up there. Yeah, good luck with that one. <laughs> but. Um, for as far were there like British comics that that you also were a fan of? Like I'm not well, aware the Beano. of them. Yeah, oh. the Beano is a big one, which what is, is that like about? these kind of crazy little characters. So it's Dennis the Menace and Nasha, uh-huh. and Dennis the Menace was like a little boy with black spiky hair, and he'd just get into trouble, and he had a dog called Nasha, and he he also had like a a group of kids as well, and they were all sort of gangly and looked like they had sort of coat hangers in their t-shirts and huh. were just misfits at school they were kind of like the misfits and it was you know based around them being truants and and getting up to mischief and stuff but they were they were really um yeah they were cute little comics actually and they were they were black and white and red those were the main colors of the comics so huh. yeah look look them up they used to do annuals every year and you, you could probably get hold of a an old Beano comic now I reckon that's so cheap. interesting <laughs> because we have we have a comic character that it's been you know since i don't know maybe back since the 50s or so and he was mm. named dennis the menace uh, oh well maybe but, that's yours no I no it completely he, wrong. no because no because because <laughs> that's very different from the way you describe this character because okay. our dennis the menace had uh, blonde hair blonde floppy oh, okay. hair and he was okay. like a kind of a loner and <laughs> i guess no maybe one wanted to be his friend <laughs> Well, that's interesting. Maybe, well, who's who? I mean, who stole the idea first? I don't know the origins of Dennis the Menace. We'll need to Google that afterwards. I mean, the... I, here I am saying, yeah, it's a British comic. <laughs> you've, you've busted me again no, for, me, no, for, not my art, for not knowing my art history. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's quite easy that, you know, the name rhymes so well that there are probably multiple yeah, maybe, variations maybe. of he's, Dennis the Menace. He's evolved over the, yeah. over the years and through the countries and stuff. Just... <laughs> So as far as you know, you you've been you mentioned early when in the beginning that it's been difficult with the pandemic and stuff, but it's also provided mm. you with different, um, mm. you know, opportunities and things. Mm. Uh, and you know, every everybody's got different, um, you know, their countries or their cities and towns are dealing with um, the pandemic mm. differently. I know the UK has been hit pretty tough. What is mm. what is uh, your experience been with since I guess? Maybe back in February and March, I know <laughs> yeah. it's made you kind of pivot and, and create new kinds yeah. of art, but what else has kind of come about it for, for you? Um, yeah, good question. I mean, it just the, the, you know, the way everything changed really quickly. And I think if you can adapt really quickly, that, that keyword, you know, that everyone loves yeah. ad- adapting. Um, <laughs> flexible. Then, yeah, flexible. You've got to be flexible with work. You've got to create new networks. You've got to be diverse. Um, <laughs> Then, yeah, I mean, look, I'm not going to lie, like in the first sort of bump, it was a bit of a shocker because I was booked into a lot of events and I lost a lot of money really quickly because all the events were cancelled. So I was doing a lot of in-person conferences, you know, big conferences, and I'd I'd work at at scale on large canvases and and was doing a fair bit of travelling, like it was just starting to get a bit, um, you know, I was going to Europe quite a bit and I went to America actually um, in the previous year. Um, So I was starting to get some more international clients, but look, you, you know, you can only be in one place with with Mm -hmm. an event like that. You know, if I'm taking a job there, I can only be there. For like several days, right? Exactly, exactly. And and then what come out of this was just that, you know, you know, quite quickly when I changed it to a bit of an online um, pitch and sell is that, you know, I could be at a meeting in South Africa in the morning and one in New York at night and have a meeting during the day with someone in England. So that that is such a plus. Yeah. Um, So definitely seeing into into more rooms but I, I was so fortunate as well because I'd had all these projects lined up and there was and you know they all fell through because the events just went completely out the window everyone was in panic mode what are we going to do and people were trying to you know get their offices to work from home so they're not going to worry about a freelancer that was booked into one event so mm-hmm. um 
So that was just a bit of like grasping, okay, what's what's left? And there was one project, and this is why I just think it, the importance of meeting people in person or building, you know, relationships are everything. Mm-hmm. Um, because I'd met this one lady at, at, at a university and we, we had a coffee and she had um, some ideas to do some big murals at the university and that fell through. But the, the very fact, I think, that we went out for coffee together, I spent a couple of hours with her, you know, didn't charge her for my time, just said, let's go and let's talk about what's possible. She managed to corner a little bit of this budget that the university had and said, look, we've already written this budget off. Let's let's still spend it with you. But what else can we do? And then we created a whole kind of new pitch and new project that we were doing all on zoom and she was chatting with a lot of her um you know academics and i was drawing their like mini lectures if you like so i did a mini lecture series of um of six different panels and that was really just down to her that i got then my first miniature portfolio of this is what i can do online because i've got here here i've got six images and Mm -hmm. so it's kind of stemmed from that in a way i mean you know, perhaps it might have gone down that route anyway, but people are so important with what they can give you. And, right. and she was really open to experimenting. And I was allowed to, you know, when I look back at those scribes now, they weren't nearly as good as the ones I'm doing presently a year later, because you're always improving, you know, you're always learning. So, um, yeah, it was lucky that that happened. And now I work a lot for that university in a lot of different departments because, you know, your name gets gets given around yeah. in, on emails and stuff. So So that's really good. So would you say you're pretty you're pretty booked up and 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 busy or Yeah, I am. I am at the moment actually. That's I've got great. a really busy a really busy January and February come up coming up. Um and then hopefully a few more in person gigs starting to appear sort of later in the year and people are starting to, to book me in for summer events that they plan to do, you know, in person, all being well. But mm-hmm. I don't wanna uh, I don't wanna curse it or anything because um yeah, hopefully they'll they'll be in and, and it's nice to work at scale and it's also really nice going to events, you know. Yeah. You, get, you know, you get some free food, you get a nice wine at the end, you know, it's nice and nice to meet people. So I enjoy that side of it as well. You know, I don't always want to be stuck on a computer like do, everyone really do people distract you though when you're when you're working Oh, I take my work very seriously. I don't know what you're on about. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I'm obviously I'm paid to, to really listen and to not get distracted. So I, I, I like a bit of a chit chat in the breaks, but I've always got a mission to fill a space at the end of the day. So I have to I have to be pretty focused and um, and concentrate on that. <laughs> have you ever gotten to a, a project where you have speaking of filling the space and, and it's like mm. it ended a lot quicker than you thought and and it's like wow that really there wasn't a whole lot of substance to that what i still got this all this white space (laughs) to fill what do i do with it (laughs) um i don't know you get inventive ways around of filling (laughs) space or doing bigger bigger bubble writing if you know it's gonna be a bit dry you're like oh i'm gonna stretch that word out a bit um i I know i did get to a to a workshop once that i was doing with some kids in a little youth club and i said to the so the lady look this is the size canvas and, and she was going to order the canvas in and um, when i got there it was literally like an, an a4 piece of paper you know like a, oh. a notebook size it was unbelievable and i was like <laughs> surely when this arrived i've got 10 kids for the day it was like yeah. we're gonna finish that in five minutes <laughs> they could have done like three of those each so um, so i remember for that one i just went out like as soon as i saw it luckily i got there half an hour before and i just went out to the bins and raided for all this cardboard <laughs> taped all this cardboard together and made like a mock wall and then painted it all white before the kids got there and then just had to distract wow. them for the first like hour whilst the white paint dried <laughs> um, and then we did something big on that because you can't work small with a bunch of kids you have to you have to work big <laughs> yeah well even hearing your story about you know talking to you know having that meeting with the person at the university i i've got to think that uh, a huge part of your success um aside from just your talent is your personality. I think it, just in talking to you uh, and and what I imagine those conversations with people that you meet with, like they, I like, I, I've said it before when I, when I first uh, interviewed you that I, I just want you to describe my conversations with random people just because it's so awesome. And, and I just want to ha- have an excuse to talk to you because oh, I just enjoy so talking nice, to you. Island. But I, I, oh, I, so nice. I feel like that's got to be a huge part of it is because people like to like to work with and and buy from people that they like and and absolutely i think you you definitely have that part down as far as 
just people probably oh, gravitate I hope so. towards I you. I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. But that's just like you, Nolan, right? Like you get, you must get lots of work and all your connections and all the hundreds of podcasts you do. People, people come on your show because they like you and they think, yeah, this guy's really cool. And I, I think you know, it's not, it's not hard work to be nice, is it? Yeah, it's not, you're it's, right. bloody, it's bloody easy yeah. to be nice. <laughs> like it's harder to be miserable. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's very tiring to be upset. <laughs> yeah, it is. I can't, I can't be grumpy all the time. I've got to like what I do. So, um, so yeah, that and hopefully that. Kind comes across and and yeah get more work through a lot of referrals of course as you probably do as well and, and most freelancers do so yeah lucky in that way yeah well i'm so glad that that i got to meet you through through alice's event and stuff and and i'm Likewise. still trying to think of 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 a reason to um you know a project to work on with you because well, one I, day it's, one it's gotta happen days. right it's gonna like, happen i'm sure it will with your industry and the people i work with i'm sure it will <laughs> and and maybe maybe i'll have a, a reason for you to draw a, a, a dolphin on the wall for me. absolutely yeah. oh, God, don't put me through that again no nope. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be a lot better this time it'd be a lot better <laughs> so for for people who who are interested in in learning more about you i know you have your website sure. and your instagram but maybe um, if you could share with, because um, we have probably a lot of people who, um, you know, operate businesses or or mm -hmm. will have events and stuff. What are some of the things that you you see that um, specifically the benefits of, you know, your products and services that that companies hire you for that that maybe will help give people an idea of like, oh, this is what could really help with with my event or Good or my meeting question. Good question, Nolan. And wow, I wish you'd have asked me that on email before, so I could have prepared <laughs> Sorry, my no. very brilliant, my very brilliant elevator pitch that I'm <laughs> going to do right now. But you'll have to forgive the um, the bodge together one. Um, mainly, I suppose the big sell for for clients that hire me is engagement. Like you want, oh, we're all yeah. dead by Zoom at the minute. We, we're yes. all dead on it. You know, people are just staring into the ether, just like not another eight hours on Zoom. You know, if you want your your staff to be a bit more engaged in the subject matter, hire me, and then you can spotlight me, and you'll see something coming together. You also get like a takeaway as an asset, so you get a roundup of the day a visual you can share mm, on all your great. social media that's tailored to you as well so i always make sure i mean obviously they're in my style but they all look very different and they they can be you know in the client's brand colors they can have your logo on it you can say your you know your key things that you want to pull out of it and i'm also starting to get into a little bit of time lapsing now so um you're probably the expert on this with your video editing skills <laughs> and sound editing but but yeah i've started to, to use my webcam to film my hands drawing it so that um and then you can speed it up and get like a, a two minute you know youtube clip that i'll put to a bit of background music and oh, i've got fine. a few of those a few of those examples on youtube so you know as long with the picture you can also send this out to your clients and say look we had this event and here's what our live scribe put together for it but but mainly look it's it's probably yeah it's engaged it's it's to get people engaged if i'm doing it live there and it's to have something to take away at the end because we yeah. don't have any you know if you were at a real event you would get maybe a tote bag of mm -hmm. you know staff and booklets and, and reading to do afterwards and we're not getting that anymore so so it's more of a, a little a gimmicky takeaway for you guys but it's also useful because it reminds mm. the attendees or the staff yeah. about the important yeah. things right so it's it's I a takeaway so, yeah. also in in the knowledge right exactly well you'd hope so you'd hope i'd pull out all the key things for it and um i mean yeah the clients have done really lovely things about me. i know that um one of my scribes ended up on like mouse mats and mugs and they sent oh, that wow. out to their clients so you know there has been a certain amount of merch made out there yeah. with my artwork on it so did, did you get a cut <laughs> did you at least get a free no, mug I have done some, oh, no, no, <laughs> no 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 i did actually some live well not live scribes i did it from recordings of a, of a guy that hired me to um illustrate his eight week deep diving course and i've not i'm not a scuba diver at all um yeah. and he was like training people who go deep 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 so i've learned so much about scuba diving <laughs> and and now they've been made into posters and i think they're up in diving centers no all way. across like these major dive sites in the world so, um, so yeah smokes. so who knows i'm not an expert but they exist out there as well for the diving community so it's very niche <laughs> well now that you now that you know all of this about deep diving are you more inclined to want to try deep diving or are you more oh yeah I'm give me a stay tank away i'll be that. off no i'll be staying away i'll be staying away thanks very much no. <laughs> now i know basically i learned all about the risks and yeah. all the things that could go wrong and one of the i know one of the videos that he showed during his presentation it was sent to me as a recording was this poor woman who like lost her mask and her you know her oxygen tank at a really low level and you just saw this panic on her face because it was a real film and i was like what 
whoa, I was not mentally prepared oh for that. That looks God. terrifying. Um, so, yeah, I won't be going deep sea diving. <laughs> yeah. I went like shallow sea diving once and it was yeah, right. such an exhausting experience that I'm like, I'm, I I'm good. I don't think I'll ever need to do this again. Yeah. I think give me a snorkel and I'll stay close to the surface. Yeah. I'll be just fine watch, watching from up there. But uh, But, yeah. <laughs> what I didn't, what I wasn't ready for is when you watch people diving, it looks so effortless. They're just gliding through the I water. And stuff. But when I did it, it's like you kick really and hard so, like, and you not barely move and then you can't stop and you just keep floating <laughs> along like, ah, I have no control <laughs> over where I'm going. <laughs> yeah, that does sound exhausting. Yeah. Not for me. Not for me. <laughs> Give me a beer on the boat and I'll watch everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be up there with you. <laughs> yeah, that. right. So that sounds good. <laughs> and is, so um, where can people find you on your website and social media and YouTube? What are your handles? Sure. So I've come up with the very original name for my website, which is just my name followed by art. So that's JennyLeonardArt.com. I think mainly because when I was starting out with that website when I was about 19, I just didn't really know what I was going to do with it. So, and it's just stayed since then. Um, and yeah, Jenny Leonard Art on all platforms, um, Instagram and, and Twitter. And I've got a Facebook page. But um, but yeah, mainly the website's kept pretty up to date and, and Insta and stuff. And, and connect with me and that would be that would be absolutely lovely, especially from this. Yeah, and I'll and I'll post this podcast. You know, being that this is my first podcast, and one, I'll, I'll bounce it around everywhere. Yay. I'll be emailing everybody with it. I can't wow. wait. Wow, <laughs> maybe maybe you can like um you know hide it in a in another drawing later. You can draw yeah. like yourself. Uh, you know talking on a on a podcast somewhere like absolutely <laughs> absolutely i should do a live scribe of this when i listen to it back oh really. that'd be awesome do a little visual like yeah. meta very meta here i am talking <laughs> and drawing about myself like where does this begin and where does this <laughs> yeah, end, and end. <laughs> full circle yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah no, um, i, I want to get you you know maybe you'll be able to tell that you've got lots more hits in england you know you say that i'm your first international yeah. guest wouldn't that be great for you could go in your website and be like oh i've had this many hits from england that'd be nice well you, you for sure it is without a doubt our first um guest from the uk so uh Great. so that oh, you 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 privilege. got that taken over 100 percent, and and i think <laughs> uh, i will just keep it that way you are going to be my go-to england perfect guest so anytime i, I need to know what's so. going on there i'm just going to call you exactly well i i know everyone in england as well so if you need any oh. more other english people well, of course i know everyone yeah so. <laughs> Well, perfect, because I was looking Tiny for the be all end all. <laughs> you know, when people say, Oh, you're from London. Do you know yeah. Dave? Yeah. <laughs> you're like, Oh, yeah, I know him well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was trying, yeah, exactly. I got to admit, I was like, I was making sure so hard not to, uh, before I got on the call with you, I was like, Don't be that snotty. Like, <laughs> I ignorant <laughs> annoying person that's like oh accents and tea and crumpets and top you of the did morning very like, well. <laughs> well you did very well you did do a little bit at the start I when know. you listen to it back i think you did do a little bit but i'll, I'll allow it I like okay it. <laughs> well as long as well you stayed on so i didn't offend you enough to <laughs> didn't hang to, up yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well I, I mentioned to you before that me and jamie had taken a trip down to uh london a few years ago and and um we now that we know you and you can connect us with everyone at in london yeah, um, exactly we got to come exactly. back but you got to come here yeah, first absolutely so. yeah absolutely well, well we'll be in a race to whoever gets first where when then i owe you a beer if you come here and you owe me a beer if i come to you deal <laughs> deal all right <laughs> well yeah, jenny it's it's been really awesome thank you so much for doing this I My just absolute loved it. pleasure. Thank you so much for inviting me. That I can't believe how quickly this hour has I gone. Know, I know, right? Thought, I thought I would run out of things to say, but I've been rabbiting on like anything. So thank you for having me. Oh, I had <laughs> I had no doubt we would have a great conversation from our first time. We we when when for those listening, we we had a, a really short interview for Alice's event and Alice said, make sure to keep it short. And I'm like, Oh, I don't do short, man. So when I was talking to you, Jenny, I was like, that's why I was like, I need you on the podcast. Cause there's so much more I need to talk to you about. Oh, that's so nice. That's so nice. Well, good luck with all of your Thank podcasts. You. Same to and you. I'll be sure to listen out and, um, and hello to everybody in Hawaii and everyone who's listening. And thank you. If you've stuck with it this long and listened to me talk for a, me and Nolan talk for an hour, then I absolutely salute you and you must get in touch and tweet me because I'm yeah. absolutely privileged. 
from you. <laughs> well, you guys got to you guys got to follow her on Instagram. Her art is so awesome and it's it's thank a really you. fun Instagram follow. So, Jenny, thank you so much. Um and we'll we'll be pleasure. in touch. Thank you. Great. Great. See you guys. <laughs> All right. Our thanks to Jenny for hanging out with us. And uh, man, that was so much fun. Isn't she just the best? I mean, okay. So I know many of you who listen to the podcast all the time and, and have heard previous episodes. Uh, it has been made quite apparent that uh, it, it's no secret that I have quite the aversion to um, British accents in in TV and movies and stuff. And that is one of the, the big reasons why I... I'm not a fan of uh, Game of Thrones and all that stuff. And Jamie even uh, had said to me when I told her that I was going to bring Jenny on as a guest, she's like, oh, but doesn't she have a British accent? <laughs> I, was like, I, I was like, okay, yes, I, I in entertainment and whatnot, it, it usually is, is, is not something I enjoy. But when Jamie and I went to go visit England and, and toured around London, absolutely loved the people there and the, the accents were awesome and then with jenny too i think her accent is fantastic like she, it, it was so it made our conversations which was already fun seem so much more lively and fun to me i just absolutely enjoyed it and i loved her and i'm so glad that i got this opportunity to to talk more with her because um like i said in the interview um i only had a, like maybe three to four minutes to talk with her for Alice's event. So the whole time I was just like, oh, I got to, you know, keep this short, but man, I just absolutely am fascinated by her and I love her energy and I just want to talk to her more. And there's so many questions I have. So I was so thrilled when she agreed to, you know, the, to join us on the podcast and the time difference is like almost like 12 hours. So, um, for her to do this where I could do it in the morning or in the daytime, she's staying up late just to, to, you know, record with us. So the fact that she was so, um, generous with her time and, and willing to stay up late to talk to us. So, so grateful for that. And, and I really enjoyed our time and I hope you enjoyed listening to her and, and her take on, art and her experiences. Uh, just what a fascinating, you know, person. So um, I'm, I'm stoked that, you know, also, you know, she's talking about how the pandemic has uh, opened up, you know, opportunities and, and different ways for her to do her art and, and such, um, doing her virtual scribing and, and whatnot. And I feel like the, the same can be said for the podcast is that, um, it's opened up so many opportunities for us to get guests from all across the globe now, literally. Like, you know, we had JB on from, from Japan uh, earlier last year, and then now we have Jenny over in, in England. It's just like, I feel like so excited that maybe there's so many more international guests and so much more we can learn about, you know, people and what life is like in, in other parts of the world. So, um, I'm, I'm encouraged that we could do some really fun and cool things with the podcast this year. So, um, especially with the technology that we got, I, I think it just, the quality sounds so much better. And, um, I'm really enjoying, um, doing the podcast now with, with what tools we have available to us. Um, that does it for this week. Uh, and we got some more great guests lined up. Uh, I'm, I'm constantly looking for, for you know, new ideas of, of what, who we can talk to and, and what we can talk about. So if, if any of you have any requests or suggestions, send them my way. Um, I know a few of you have in the past and, uh, if I haven't done it yet, it may be because I'm super disorganized and forgetful. And so you might need to remind me if I, especially if I said, Hey, that's a great idea. Uh, I want to do that. If you notice that I haven't done it yet, it's not because I was lying. It's because I've um, kind of gotten disorganized and in all the moving and I don't know where my notes are. So if uh, any of you have given me suggestions in the past and haven't seen that episode pop up yet, send them back my way again, please, if you wouldn't mind, because um, I would love to do them still. Okay, well, uh, on behalf of, you know, our super producer extraordinaire Jamie who is behind the scenes uh, not here today uh, and my co-host Dr. Emmett Bean who is on my lap here thank you so much for hanging out with us and we'll catch you next week on another episode of Hanging Out 
with Nolan Hong.